Labrador makes a Bluetooth app that connects to their unit where you can control it and read the results at a distance. Since I am a handgun shooter, it's not that important for me because I can, as I shoot, I can easily reach all the controls and, and read the unit. However, if you're a bench rest rifle shooter, things are going to be different. As you know, the way the lab radar works best is when the muzzle is as close to the unit as it can be. But if you're a bench rest rifle shooter and you've got a short bench to work with, you would be over here and the muzzle could be sticking way out here. So it'll be very difficult to take a shot, look at the results, or change things, or set up a new shot series. And so just the logistics of using it with a short bench and a long gun can make it difficult to use. And this is where the Bluetooth app comes in handy. But what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go back inside and show you how to use a Bluetooth app. Installing the Lab Radar mobile app on your smart device is no different than installing any other app. And starting it is the same. You just press it. The startup screen on mine has generally two sections. The top section is showing the known lab radar units it knows about. And then the bottom section shows where data can come from for that unit. The section that says flash, this is referring to any shot data stored in the lab radar unit's memory and not on the SD card. Now, if you have an SD card installed, as you know, the lab radar will not store it in flash memory. It actually stores it on the card. This long identifier is identifying the SD card for that unit. Each of these has a little trash can. So if you press it, it's just asking you if you want the mobile app to ignore that source. Yes or no. I'm just going to go ahead and say no. Now you cannot start the lab radar unit from the app. That you still have to start from the unit itself. You'll get the startup screen, then it will display the latest shot series. So at this point, I'm going to just tap this unit identifier, and you'll see it start searching, and then you can also see where it starts downloading data. Now while the data is here, and it'll stay here even when you turn off the unit, I don't know of any way to download the data from your phone to your computer. I still download the data from my SD card. If you look across the top, you'll see five menu options. Last shot will display the last shot of the current series, which in this case is series three. And it has 27 shots, so it should be showing shot 27. And there we have it, series 3, shot 27. The second menu option is series list. It lists all the series it found from the unit. As you can see, we've got three here, we've got three here. The next menu option is series detail. So it will show the details of that series, which is series 3. If you see these left right arrows, it's going to download the data and then get it for series two. So there's series two. I'm going to go back to series three. Then the next menu option is shots list. This lists all the individual shots for that particular series. In this case, it's series three. And then shot details. That will give you the details of each individual shot. In this case, it's shot 27 because that's the last shot in the series. Now, the app does have a flyout menu. I have a little bit difficult time. I try to touch the icon to get the menu. I'm usually a little bit more successful if I swipe to the menu. The menu options are device manager. If you press that, it'll take you back where you can select device or add a device. Next option is series list. That's no different from the list we've seen before. Next option on the flyout menu is settings. Now, there's two sets of settings. One is the mobile app itself, where you can have the app display the data in different units of measure. For example, you can set it to meters for distance. Velocity, you can set it to meters per second. For weight, it can be grams. And energy can be in joules. 
Now for the Labrador unit itself, and here's the settings for the actual unit itself. You can give it an alias, sometimes known as a nickname. Here you can specify the units of measure. You can set which channel, the power mode, your trigger, whether it's trigger, Doppler. I always use trigger. I don't need to use Doppler. These are your set distances, DX1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and your other preferences. This one, the preferences call it velocity range. Here they call it weapon type, but it's rifle, handgun, archery. Then you have the arm time, and then you have the projectile weight. Now, why the app allows you to set the display units of measure to be different from the unit, I'm not entirely sure. I guess if you're shooting internationally and you don't want to change your unit, you can display the, the amounts on your mobile app using more international units of measures. Now I'm going to go back to the series. I'm going to go into series detail. And if you look, V0 averages in meters per second. Up here it's still in feet per second. Now what I want to do is I want to go back. I want to do it off camera. I want to go back and reset the application to be in sync with the units of measure on the unit. And then we'll go in more detail with this. You'll see these two icons at the top. The one that looks like a recycle icon allows you to refresh the data. So if somebody's actively shooting and you want to download it to your device, It'll refresh it. The plus icon allows you to create a new shot series. Doesn't ask you to confirm it, it just creates it. So you can see new shot series four here and four is up here. I don't need series four, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So you select it and you make sure only the ones you want to delete are selected and then you press the delete icon. Ask you to confirm it. Yes, so we're back to three series on the app and on the unit itself. What I want to show next is arming the unit. You can see up here, the unit's actually in review mode. It's not in arm mode. But if I press this, it goes into arm mode and is transmitting radar. Now I intentionally set the timeout on the radar to 10 seconds, which is why it started blinking as soon as I armed it. But I set it to 10 seconds because I wanted to demonstrate that if you're out in the range and you're testing and the unit's on the other side of the bench and it disarms, you just rearm it. No big deal. If you want to disarm it, you can do it here. And what I want to do is go into the series detail. This is series three. V0 average velocity is 930, which matches right up here. Highest 941, 94. Lowest 915, 915. Spread is 26, 26. Deviate 6.1. Shots 27. If I scroll, I get the average velocities for my DX1 through 5 and a graph. If you look at the three options down here, it's really velocity, kinetic energy, and power factor. It doesn't say velocity, it's displaying the unit of measure velocity. It doesn't say kinetic energy, it's displaying the unit of measure kinetic energy, which is foot pounds force. If you remember Elaborate our Excel workbook, the leftmost columns are velocity, the next set of columns is kinetic energy, the next column is power factor, then we have projectile weight and time and some other information. This is how the app organizes that data. So this was the velocity data for the series. If I press this, I'm now in the kinetic energy data for the series. Show me foot pounds force for the average of all the shots at zero distance. It's showing the highest, lowest, then the kinetic energy for the different distances I set at DX1 through 5. If I press PF, this is the power factor average. And it summarizes some velocity and kinetic energy information, gives me the bullet weight. I don't compete in a sport that uses power factor, but if you're at a tournament where you have to measure your power factor, the way you could do it is you would create a series, have one competitor shoot their three shots, and then look at their power factor average. Then for the next competitor, you'll create a new series, have them take their three shots, then you look at their average, create the next series, and so forth. And you can do all of that 
from the app. So that completes the overview of the Labrador mobile app. I hope this information was useful to you, and thank you for watching.